Hey y'all, hi. I <laughs> just filmed a trying new makeup video. And one of the things I tried that I expected to hate but ended up loving is this like glitter lip crystal. I cannot stop looking at my shiny, shiny lips. It's Pink Opal from Shantikai. I thought it was gonna be like really, really 90s. And maybe it is, but if there's something wrong with that, then I don't wanna be right. Today's video, what is it? It's like updates on a whole bunch of stuff. What happened, what has happened is that in the part of my brain where I collect video ideas, information that I want to impart in YouTube videos, general things of interest that have anything to do that are like even remotely related to or adjacent to the topic on my, of my YouTube channel, like the stuff that I talk about here. There's a little corner in that room in my brain in which I've been stashing like little updates. Things have changed about things that I've talked about before, but none of them fits elegantly into like another video. Like it's all stuff that doesn't, I can't place it anywhere else. So I decided to just stick all of these little updates together and film it as one video. So some of them are like product related, like products that I'm using or products I've talked about before and I'm like updating you on my relationships with those products. And some of them is just like life things, like things that I'm doing, feeling, stuff about the channel and how certain videos are unfolding over these weeks. I'm just sitting down to give you an update on anything and everything that needs an update. If this happens to be your first time to my channel, hopefully this will still be relevant. I mean, the information will still matter even if if it's not an update for you, but rather the first time you're hearing about any of this, I hope you'll stick around. I hope you'll subscribe if you like it. This is mostly a beauty channel, but I talk about other things too. I'm gonna be talking about other things today. Let's go ahead and get right into the meat of the video. So the first update is like really beauty related, product related, routine related, and practical. And it's also related specifically to one of you because it was probably in the last video in which I reviewed a huge pile of skincare all at once that I talked about some of the body care products that I've been using. I talked about the fact that some of the body care products I've been using are like body acne products. And I talked about the fact that I've for a long time now been struggling with a resurgence of body body acne on the chest and back. One of you in the comments in that video said, hmm, body acne on the chest and back, it sounds like it could be hair product related or hair care related as though like something I'm using in my hair is getting onto my chest and back and clogging my pores there. And when I read that comment, I had this total aha moment because I feel like it's been going on for a long time, but I've also been using New Wash, which is the product that I use to shampoo and condition my hair. I've been using it for kind of a long time, like over a year at this point, maybe even a year and a half, however long I've had a shag haircut. And you know, I've made a lot of videos about my hair, about my hair care routine, about what I use to wash my hair. I'll try to remember to link some of those in the description box down below in case you're curious about that and you haven't seen them. And I'm not gonna go into it at length right now. But in brief, I'll tell you that New Wash, it's a co-wash. So it's like a shampoo and conditioner in one. It's just a really, really nourishing, rich product with which to cleanse your hair and it nourishes your hair and scalp at the same time. But it's really like a thick butter. It's like a hair mask that you work into the roots of the hair. It's this whole long process, you know what I mean? Because like it doesn't foam. It doesn't have those soap qualities that can be stripping. It's kind of just like a really, really thick hair mask or conditioner that you're working enough into your hair and rinsing enough through your hair that it actually cleanses at the, t at the same time as it's conditioning. It's absolutely fantastic. And you know, you can pry this from my cold dead hands, especially with this haircut it has proved to be the perfect product with which to cleanse my hair. And it also works really well with my routine. I only wash my hair once a week, if that. And again, I've talked about all of that before and none of that has changed in terms of how I'm caring for my hair. None of that has changed. But I realized when I read that comment that I think that this resurgence in body acne actually does roughly correlate with when I first got my hair cut this way and I switched over to new wash. And it makes total sense because yeah, it's full of oils and it's a hair care product is not designed to go on the body. And I have this long, incredibly thick hair. So about once a week, I'm putting a ton of this like creamy stuff into my hair, working and working in, and then I'm rinsing it off and it's going all down my chest and back. And of course I can see now that it's probably just clogging my pores and my chest and back. And even though I wash my body after that, my hair is still wet, maybe still retaining a little product and it's like lying on those places. It was a huge aha moment. I was like, oh my gosh, this, this is it. This is the answer that I've been seeking. Since then, I have changed my, or I have added to my self-care routine on hair washing days to try to solve this problem. So here's what I've been doing. 
after I have finished washing, washing, rinsing, rinsing, rinsing my hair, what I do is I stick my head out of the shower and I get my Kitsch hair towel, which I didn't bring down here with me. I think it's in the laundry, but it's a microfiber towel that is designed. It's like a hair turban that wraps up your hair and keeps it snug on your head. And I've actually worn it in past videos. So if you watch my past hair care videos, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's like pink with a palm leaf print. So I like stick my head out of the shower and rub my hair dry with a towel. And then I put that hair towel back on to get all of my wet hair up off of my face and body. And then I get back in the shower, but I keep my head out of the stream of water. And sometimes I have to direct the stream of water so it's a little bit lower. So it's just hitting me starting right here and I can keep my head out of the water. That's also how I take showers without wetting my hair all of the rest of the days of the week. And then I engage in a rigorous and multi-level body, chest and back cleanse cleansing process. And here's what I've been doing. I've just been using like everything that I have that I think could possibly be helping completely cut, dissolve, destroy, and exfoliate away the new wash that I think there's residue of on my chest and back. So I've just been throwing like everything in the kitchen sink at the problem, basically. You probably don't need to use if you're going to follow my footsteps. If you for some reason have the same issue and you want to try what I'm trying, you don't need to use absolutely everything I've been using. But here's what I've been using. I usually start with the soft services buffing bar, which is a really good exfoliating product. And I have the blue one, which is like their regular one, the year round version in my shower, but it's all kind of half used and melted. This is a new one clearly. And this one is like limited edition holiday one in a spice scent, which I really like. The other one's unscented. I kind of prefer this one. I'm looking forward to using it. The little exfoliate, the scrubbies are really, really small, really quite intense and harsh, especially if the bar has dried. Once it softens and gets a little bit wet, it's a little bit easier, but I feel like it's really, really, really doing the most. Like it is exfoliating and sloughing away a lot of skin and then whatever is on the skin when I use it after I've washed my hair. From there, I usually, for good measure, <laughs> go in with the Necessaire Gommage. This is also a body exfoliator. It's more of a body wash with little exfoliating particles mixed into it. And it's gentler than than the bar from Soft Services. But it also has some alpha hydroxy acids in it. So I feel like I start with the intense physical exfoliation, then I go in with a little bit of a more gentle physical exfoliation, but adding in some chemical exfoliation. So like getting deep into the pores and making sure that if there's anything clogging them, it's getting exhumed a bit. And from there, I go in with this much despised product that I've discussed before. This is a Kosas Sport body wash, which is like an anti anti-acne body wash. It says it has glycolic and lactic acids and fruit enzymes in it. I can tell that it's really active because especially after having exfoliated my chest and back with those other products, when I put this on, it stings. I can like feel that it has acid in it and it's stinging, but it's worth it to me. Again, it's just like once a week and I feel like it's what's required to help heal from like all of this acne and all these clogged pores I've had all over my chest and back for like a year and a half at this point. The thing I don't like about this, it's not the stinging. I actually don't mind the stinging. It's not like it's deeply painful. It's just that I can feel it working, you know? The thing I don't like about it is the smell. I talked about it in that skincare video. I feel like it's a weird combination of like floral and too much white floral, but they're also trying to have some like spice in there and it just, it's not working for me. But the product itself really is working for me. So that's what I do in the shower. <laughs> then when I get out of the shower, I've actually started using this product the Soft Services Smoothing Solution. It has lactic acid and urea in it, so it's also exfoliating and smoothing. It's supposed to help with things like KP, crepey skin, ingrown hairs. It's not specifically for acne, but it is a gentle exfoliant. And you know, it's not just that I don't want to have more breakouts. I'm also trying to kind of like heal and smooth the skin because it's scarred from all of the breakouts that I have been having. I actually besmirched this as well in that video when I talked about skincare. It has, to me, kind of a gross smell. It's like a sticky gel. I don't like using it, but I'm really trying to do the most. I physically don't like using it. It also stings when it goes on after I've done all this intense exfoliation when I get out of the shower. But I'm here to report to you that it's working, especially on my back. My back is like the first to recover. 
I don't have any acne on my back anymore and the scars have faded and my skin is like coming back really smooth and clear like it used to be. I still have a bit, like a little bit of texture still on my chest. It's not exactly like completely smooth and blemish free. I think that my chest kind of got the worst of it and so there are just some long clogged pores. It's taking a long time for like everything to exhume. It's not quite as clear yet as my back but it's working. And so I thank you so much whoever left that comment. We've got not the root of the problem. I feel excited about having done this like beauty problem solving thing. Excited to have found a solution that doesn't involve ceasing to use new wash because I really love it. And very grateful to have these really lovely, intense body smoothing, exfoliating products to test because I was able to put them into action. And it's all sort of proof of concept for them. I would say if you are starting from having nothing, thing and you want to do something like this, I'd actually just go with the soft services. I feel like of all of these products, the two most effective ones, the heavy lifters are the soft services scrubbing bar and this smoothing exfoliant gel. And I also know that soft services, I think has some products that are more specifically anti-acne, which I would totally trust as well. The important thing though, is just knowing, having found out what it was that was causing the problem and being able to take these preventative measures against that moment every single week when I was like coating my chest and back in a pore clogging substance. Okay, channel update. I mean, this isn't like a full channel update, but just a little bit of a small thing. The Lisa Eldridge video, I just keep getting questions about it in the comments. I promise it's coming. I've already filmed some B-roll for it. I'm testing the products like around the clock. The issue, well, I mean, it's a couple of things. One, it's a lot of products, right? I got two palettes, two singles, and two lipsticks, and it just takes weeks to like thoroughly test that many eyeshadows because I only have two eyes and I'm also having to test other things and in, intermittently in between because I'm making content that involves other things. So I'm only just getting to the point where I have what I think is like uh, an opinion about all of the products or an assessment of them that is robust, like that is backed up by enough actual experience that I'll feel, I'll feel comfortable, you know, sharing it with you. But also my order took a really long time to arrive. Like I ordered literally five minutes after the launch. Like I was on there with my finger hovering over the button. I ordered on the launch day directly after the launch. And there were people posting their Lisa Eldridge makeup reviews before I even received my package. I don't know why it took so long to ship, but it took like at least a week. Usually Lisa Eldridge shipping is really fast. It took like at least a week, if not longer, to leave the warehouse. And then it took a really long time to get to me as well. So it was like a long delay before I could even start reviewing the products. Now I'm trying to be really thorough about reviewing the products. And then because it's going to be an insanely thorough review with a lot of B-roll footage and a lot of segments, it's going to take a long time to edit once it's filmed. I'm going for quality over haste. The ship has completely sailed on me posting that Lisa Eldridge review within the window of time when it was like highly relevant to the makeup community. I was never even in the running to do that because I didn't get the makeup in time. And also I really set myself up by ordering so much of it. But I know that a lot of you are like over there chewing your nails over it. So I just wanted to say, number one, it's definitely in the works. It is like actively in the works. So don't worry that I'm not going to post it. And number two, maybe cool your heels a little bit because it's probably going to take, I actually thought it was going to be up by mid-December and I might even have replied to some comments saying it was going to be up by mid-December. <laughs> no, it's going to be rolling in like with the new year. <laughs> it's going to be like happy new year, Lisa Eldridge review, like hour long Lisa Eldridge review. But it's coming and I hope that it'll be worth the wait. One of my list items, I've been keeping a list of things that I wanted to include in this video, like updates. One of the things on the list says Instagram presence. And I don't know what I intended to say. I don't know what I was thinking when I put that on the list. I might just have meant to update you on the fact that I'm like going hard on Instagram right now. Although as I sit here, I think when I wrote it on the list originally, it was like two weeks ago and everything was still just cracking along on Instagram. These exact past two weeks, weeks, I've had to step back from Instagram a little bit because I've had a lot going on just personally and it was like something had to give and that was actually the thing that gave. So I feel a little bit silly saying this now at this very moment because it hasn't been a very respectable showing in the past two weeks. But for the most part, since August, I have been trying to be, <laughs> I just got something in my eye, disaster. I have been trying to be an Instagram influencer. 
I've been like posting my outfit of the day every day, making reels, making reels about makeup. I used to be just a YouTuber who had an Instagram account on which I occasionally posted and you could kind of like sometimes see something from me over there, but it was just stagnant for months on end. Like I wasn't really engaged. In August, I engaged and I've tried to stay engaged. I'm like really trying to do it and really enjoying it. I like making reels. I like posting my outfit of the day. It's a much better outlet for me to showcase what I wear and to talk about fashion than YouTube just because of like the way that my the direction in which my channel has grown. I love making fashion content on YouTube but it requires a massive effort to like change around the setup and we have to devote like two or three beauty videos worth of energy to make one fashion video. Maybe more like four or five beauty videos worth of time and energy go into making one fashion video. But over on Instagram it's sort of the opposite. It's like fashion is the main thing. And I'm featuring beauty there as well, but it's a little bit more on the backseat, in the backseat. So I think that what past Hannah meant by putting this on the list was just to tell you that if you are someone who's connected to me, like here on YouTube, and you also enjoy Instagram, but the last time you checked, I was just, I was but a mere wisp over on Instagram, like I was just a ghost of myself, not really actually active. Well, I'm here to tell you that that is no longer the case. And if you aren't following me on Instagram, then, you know, please do. I'm really doing the most over there. Or I'm trying, I'm doing the most in my own little way. Okay, the next thing on the list, quick update on Joe's podcast, The Banging of the Shrew. It is now all published. All six episodes are out. So you can listen to them all the way through, which I actually think there's something to be said for because I've been reminded of this as I've been listening through all of the episodes. My favorite thing to do is to put it on when I'm like doing things around the house, like laundry, and tidying up and just generally like resetting the house. I love to put an episode on because I'll like finish a task, but then I'll want to keep listening. So it'll like keep me, I'll, it'll make me find another task in the house to do so that I can like keep listening. But listening to multiple episodes in a row and having there be sort of momentum to the act of listening to it, I've been reminded recently that there's something to be said for that because it is Shakespearean language. You get into this kind of trance, like when you start listening to it, it can feel a little bit like jumping into cold water, you know what I mean? Because the order of the syntax and the cadences are just a little bit different from how we talk in the everyday. So it takes a minute to to get like your ear attuned to it. But the thing that's magical about Shakespeare and the magic of that has been retained by this because it's su such an accurate parody of Shakespeare tonally and also just structurally the language. The thing that's magical about it is that you, and this is true of just poetry in general too, you can like get meaning from it even though it feels like it's sort of going into your brain in like a sideways way. Like the very front level of your comprehension of language might not have processed it exactly the way you usually process language, and yet the meaning of the sentence will go in the back door, and you'll just get it. And there's something so pleasurable about that. It's sort of transcendent. It's like a vibe. It's like walking through a museum and you're seeing paintings, these huge abstract paintings, but you just know what they're about. You know what I mean? You're just getting what they're about. You're receiving on like this visceral level rather than the pedantic level of logical information that you might get. I don't know if you're like reading an instruction manual. This is just to say the play in and of itself as a piece of artwork that has been transformed into this unbelievable fictional podcast with these beautiful performances is great, just like in the raw. But the experience of getting into the zone, of hearing it, is sort of like an added benefit. It's like its own separate thing. And it's nice to have more than just one episode available and to be able to stay in that zone is what I'm trying to say. And I think that for some of you, especially if you aren't that into Shakespeare, if you haven't like seen a lot of Shakespeare plays, if you haven't spent a lot of time with Shakespearean language, you might actually have a better experience, like feel more connected to the podcast if you listen to it straight through. If you like put it on when you have a two and a half hour task or a three hour task, like painting the wall in your house or like winding all your rolls of yarn or like clearing out your closet, decluttering your closet or something like that, right? If you have like a long multi-hour project and you put it on to listen straight through, you might find yourself vibing with it in a way that you 
wouldn't if you were just listening to like one half hour episode at a time every week spread over the course of several weeks. If for some reason you've missed every reference to my husband's amazing project, in brief, I'll tell you, it is a retelling of The Taming of the Shrew set in a brothel. It is in Elizabethan English, in iambic pentameter. It is as if it was written by Shakespeare, except that it is explicit and you'll probably want to listen to it on your headphones. And it's it's just really good. It's really good. And the further you get into it, the deeper it gets. And it really starts handling, in spite of its the complete absurdity of its dirtiness, like on the surface, it really starts handling deep fundamental questions about relationships and power as it gets into like the fifth and sixth episode. So I wanted to just give you an update now that the entire podcast is available as a complete series. You can download it all in one fell swoop and listen to it all in one fell swoop, and I hope that you will. Okay, here's an incredibly sweet update to something that I've talked about recently that also involves a couple of beauty products. So if you saw my gift guide, then you will have seen me talking about Takamichi Beauty Room, which I said in that video is a beautiful online online shop. I mean, exquisitely curated, exquisitely designed. It's just a whole feeling, a whole thing, just visiting the website. And I've loved it for years. I think I discovered it like kind of early in the pandemic and I've loved it for years and I've placed a little order here and a little order there over the years for little things like incense matches, beautiful soap. It's an example of extremely thoughtful, extremely tasteful curation of things that have beauty and usefulness in equal measure, which I just get along with that so well. Skincare, body care, home scent, candles, but also like some glassware, just beautiful little useful things, but everything is special in some way that is just quite elevated and yet earthy and accessible. I don't know. It's just a beautiful shop. So I've talked about it before. I talked about it in that gift guide because I feel like the little incense matches that they carry and little incense leaves make really good small gifts. And I'm aware that it's a small independent store. You know what I mean? Like in gift guides like that, I always end up talking about things that you can get from Amazon or like things from Sephora, brands that everyone's heard of, brands that are connected to corporations or owned by corporations and all of this stuff. And I always try to balance that out by including a handful of totally independent small shops that are run by like a person that have that stamp of like specialness and like a single person's artistic vision or a single person's project. So in that video, I talked about Early Wood, which is the wooden utensils. That's like a small independent shop. And Takamichi Beauty Room is also a small independent shop. However, I had never been to the brick and mortar store. I didn't really know who the owner was. I think I had tagged them on Instagram a couple of times and she had written and said, thank you so much for tagging me, right? But we hadn't really like talked. So that was the status of me with Takamichi Beauty Room the last time that I mentioned them on camera. For a whole bunch of reasons, mysterious, strange, dreamy reasons that I won't go into here, I happened to be unexpectedly and in a very last minute way in New York for like 20 hours last week. I was staying with my friend Simbri and we had a couple of hours to kill before my train left to bring me back to where I live. We went to Takamichi Beauty Room. We just like showed up. We like looked it up on the map and we like showed up at Takamichi Beauty Room and it's exactly what you would imagine. It's like the, the physical manifestation of the online shop. And we went in and we were warmly, lovingly greeted by this just just glowing, sweet, exuberant, open-hearted feeling woman who was like behind the till. And we went in, we like bundled ourselves in because it was kind of cold outside. And I thought she probably was the owner, right? Just because of the overall vibe. So I said to her, I'm so excited to be able to come here in person because I'm a huge fan of Takamichi Beauty Room and I have a YouTube channel. I've talked about it a couple of times in the YouTube channel. And suddenly she like recognized me and she was like, oh my gosh, you're Hannah. She was like, my online orders suddenly skyrocketed and it took me a really long time to figure out why but then I finally traced it back to the gift guide. So those of you who saw the gift guide and then went on to purchase from Takemichi Beauty Room, it makes a huge difference to a small shop. You know what I mean? It's like when I mention something that's sold at Sephora and then some of you go buy it, it's like I'm g- glad that I'm able to give you the information about something that is going to serve you well and that's all in the system of the beauty space and there's nothing wrong with that. But it was just 
just a sharp reminder of what a dramatic difference it makes to small business owners when people choose to shop small. She was just over the moon about it. So I wanted to pass that along to you, those because I know some of you are watching actually have placed an order from Takamichi Beauty Room because you've seen me talk about it before. And I bought a few small things. I got this little bath bomb. I mean, this is an example of the kind of thing that she has. And some more of the Hebe matches. I got a couple of things I'm going to give as gifts to people, so I'm not going to show them here. But needless to say, it was a glorious experience. It was just special to have like an in-person connection like that. Okay, I feel like I've been talking forever. I thought that this foolishly, I thought that this was going to be a short video because it was just me catching you up on a few little things. I guess I haven't learned my lesson about that by now, but I'll, I just briefly want to touch on these last two things. So without getting into detail or going on about it for too long, I just feel like it makes sense to update you on the work that I've been doing with my friend Julia Frodal because I've talked about her compassion class a couple of times. Julia is a really gentle, wise, brilliant person whose work is to guide people basically like into their own interior, like into their own inner lives and help them grow. I've known her for a really long time. I mean, we were, we were connected long before she started doing this work in the way that she's doing it now, which is like robustly with online courses and with one-on-one -on -one work. So I've talked about the Compassion class before, which is a group class that she teaches regularly. I, I don't think I mentioned the Dream Tending workshop on YouTube, but I posted about it on Instagram. So I took that as well, and I'm in the fourth week of it, and that has been incredible. The, the update that I wanted to give you guys is that I've also been doing some one-on-one -on -one work with Julia. I feel like it's worth mentioning because at times I've touched on, I guess what I would consider like the importance of inner work, shadow work, getting to know oneself better. I've talked about therapy before in talking about kind of like my journey away from overspending and just towards balance or my journey away from being miserable and not loving myself towards being okay with myself in a way that stabilizes things like my relationship with beauty and my relationship with spending. Like that was the seed of my channel. And I've gone back to discuss it time and time again, kind of touched base on it time and time again. And whenever I talk about it, I talk about the importance of the journey into the inner world, into the interior. And I have found working with Julia to be, it's like another level of self-inquiry. It has been particularly transformative for me this season. And this round of sessions that I've been doing with her one-on-one, -on -one, delving into the inner world through dreams, but also through other methods, through other ways of questioning. You know, it's not really the thing to like go into extreme detail about that right now or like I'm definitely not equipped to share it publicly, but I do want to share the fact that I've been doing that publicly because I'm so grateful to Julia for being who she is and because she offers such an array of kind of entry points into that kind of work. The compassion class in particular has a sliding scale and there are even scholarships available to that. And you know, she, like the owner of Takamichi Beauty Room, is a small business owner and every little mention I think helps. And if there's anything that I hope will grow and like take root for more people. It's this. It's like this kind of thinking, this kind of work. It has truly defined my experience of moving through the world over the past several months. And it just didn't make sense to give like a life update without mentioning that. So I'll link Julia down below her website. I'll try to mention by name some of the classes that I've taken from her um, in case you are interested. And lastly, this is kind of a channel update too. I just think it makes sense to like update you a little bit on how I'm thinking right now about my makeup collection because I've just done this ruthless declutter. And so now I have my personal makeup collection in my vanity, which I'm hoping to spotlight soon on my channel. It's like highly edited, finally something that I can just like live with, with clarity and peace. Kind of like when I did the minimalist closet for a month, my makeup collection is kind of like the makeup version of that. And I'm having the same experience living with it, right? I feel the same sense of ease, a release of the usual kind of decision fatigue that I feel. I see where everything is. Everything's much more visually calm. There isn't the sense of like chaotic energy coming from that corner of the room like there used to be. And it's really made me think that I want to put in place a firmer barrier for entry for new products into my collection. You know, I used to do like the reckoning with PR where I would sit down with things that had come in PR and decide whether 
I was going to keep them or not. It stopped making logistical sense to do that, which is like the flow of things and how you view them. But that means that that barrier has become really porous and things will sort of just float their way over into my makeup collection, especially storage wise. There isn't like a clear delineation between what I'm testing and what I own. And so things will just sort of like float into my makeup collection and stay without me having made a conscious decision about them. And I've just kind of had it, especially now that I'm experiencing the joy of a very carefully curated and edited collection. I think I might start really, truly putting everything that comes to me for review, really seriously keeping it in purgatory, like really keeping it out of my makeup collection, keeping my personal collection the size that it is. Like, I don't want it to grow very much. And if it does grow because new things get added, I'm going to declutter. I'm going to purge. I really don't want drawers and drawers full of makeup anymore. That's how I'm feeling right now. To me, it's like a furthering of the division between the personal and the professional. It's like, as someone who reviews makeup as part of her work, I have the benefit of being able to sometimes keep the makeup that I review, but I want that to feel like a bigger deal going forward. I want it to feel like a bigger deal when something like crosses that divide. And I would like to move into a mode in which my default is to not keep it. I actually haven't really thought this through. I'm kind of just like talking myself through it right now. But I put the declutter on the list as something to talk about, to give an update on, and makeup collection philosophy as something that I wanted to give an update on. And I think that what I meant by that when I put it on the list was that I'm feeling like my current philosophy, my personal makeup collection philosophy, is that I don't want to own anything that's not actively in rotation. And I only have room for like six or seven eyeshadow palettes to literally be in rotation, like be in my drawer, be things that I'm using all the time. I only have room for a certain number of blushes to actually be actively in rotation. And if I start exceeding the number of things that I can be actively using all at one time, I'm going to declutter because I really, really want to keep a lid on it. That's how I'm feeling right now. I'll let you know if and when things change because they may. Try and walk the middle path over here. You know what I mean? I think that going to the extreme in either direction isn't the solution for me personally. But with this one massive declutter that I've done here in the winter of 2022 has come an actual shift in what I conceive of wanting for myself. For the this year, since we moved here, until this declutter, I've conceived of my makeup collection as being something that kind of lives half in storage and then gets cycled into use on my vanity or gets cycled into use into my drawers. And I don't want to do that anymore. I want there to be a few enough things in use that I can always store all of them in my drawers and see all of them all the time. So I'm hoping to give you a tour of my new decluttered vanity. Keep an eye out for that. I'll make some content in that space once it's all completely done and completely set up. So you'll at least be able to have like imagery to associate with what I'm talking about. And that's it. Those are all the things that have happened. Those are all the updates, at least everything that I can think of right now. I really appreciate you for spending this time with me. I hope that this was an enjoyable one to watch. Again, I hope you'll subscribe if you uh, would like to be subscribed. And I really hope that you're taking extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. 